everybody, welcome. And I'm so honored to introduce to you Dr. Carol McCall. Dr. Carol, um, I met her three years ago when I was looking for a coach, and she has been a godsend for me. Dr. Carol has been training me and has transformed me ever since. Dr. Carol is a powerful thought leader with 50 years of experience in knowledge of field of communication, coaching, and education. She has reached millions of people around the world, such as Jamaica, Israel, England, Canada, and Thailand, to name a few. Dr. Carol has dedicated her life in development training and coaching of individuals in the personal development area. Dr. Carol has written a new book called Listen, There is a World Waiting to be Heard, The Empowerment of Listening. Welcome, Dr. Carol, to Infinite Love. <laughs> Thank you very much, and thank you for having me. I will start by letting you know that I have been parting using this work for the last five decades. I recently celebrated my 80th birthday, and I continue to ask myself, what do I want to be when I grow up? <laughs> and so what the answer is, is the listener for all of humanity. And given that I have dedicated the last five decades to my life to people listening and people being heard, where that started for me was actually when I became a teacher and I started teaching children at kindergarten level all the way through the college level. And I recognized early with children in kindergarten that they listened very closely. And it was there that I began to experientially learn that words matter. And I started peer, my, the, my kindergartners to start teaching each other because they used the words that their peers understood. And so words and listening began to take a very dominant part in my life. And I taught all the way through uh, kindergarten through college and then began to turn to therapy in terms of really teaching the entire child, not just the academics, but paying attention to how the child listens, how the child feels about things, how the child thinks about things, how the child expresses him herself. And then I recognize that there's always a child within all of us, no matter chronologically how old we become. And so out of that, I determined, well, it was time for me to really start to, to study and get myself trained in the various areas that affect, it, that affect all of us, as in family systems with Virginia Satir, human development with Eric Erickson, child development. I was influenced by Jean Piaget with transactional analysis with Eric Byrne, with systems theory with Buckminster Fuller, transformational technology with Werner Erhardt and death and dying stages with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Those became my mentors, my influencers, and people that I really learned about human beings and became very inspired to really begin to work with people individually for them to get how truly powerful and magnificent people are. And so I started with my own, with my own, uh, private practice. And as I was starting with my own private practice, I was also invited to have a very interesting experience with the criminally insane serial killers. And I went to San Quentin when they were in California, when they were housed in San Quentin. And as I was able to sit with serial killers, I, they were asked the question, how could you create, how could you do such heinous crimes? And their answer was, because nobody was listening. And I went, oh my goodness. And the only time, the statement was, and the only time that they listened was when they were near death and dying. 
And then I had another impact, impactful experience when I was invited to be a special United Nations delegate on their 50th anniversary in 1995. And I was sitting with the nations of the world. And as I sat there with the nations of the world, the one thing that stood out for me is that nobody was listening. And, and I was very impacted by that. And I said, well, it really is time for me to fully participate with people and begin to discover what is it that people n require in terms of knowing that they've been heard, that they've been accepted, they've been acknowledged, and that these kinds of heinous acts against all of us don't occur. So in my private practice, I started working initially with women women who had been raped as babies and young girls and then turned into prostitutes. If you can begin, believe that my first practice was with young girls and, and younger prostitutes, not younger than 12, but 13, 14, and 15 prostitutes who weren't heard when they, when they, were, when they would tell their family's members that something horrendous had happened to them, they weren't heard I knew then really what my life purpose was and is. And that is, that has been to devote my life to women, men, and children to being heard, to learn to listen to their voice, their own voices, to live by their own, up to their own expectations, to acknowledge their own achievements, to accept their higher self, and to know that they are you and us, we are here so that we can truly accomplish that which is our highest self and our highest good. So out of that, I developed a system for, uh, for mindful, empowered, empowered mindful listening. And there are nine structures, there are nine tools to how to be an effective, empowered, mindful listener. Any one of the tools that you practice will have you have a breakthrough in your listening. There are nine of them and I'll give them to you briefly. And then tonight you will have the opportunity to truly experience one of them. And the nine are brevity, which is the first one. As a rule, we human beings, we talk too much and we talk not wondering whether or not we are being heard and there's always the experience when someone has checked out uh, that it, there's a statement that says the lights are on the dogs are barking and nobody's home well that's very common very often you can be talking to someone and it's clear that they've checked out they've gone somewhere else they're they're thinking about someone else waiting for you to finish so that they can say what there is for them to say. And it's like two ships passing in the night. And that passes for communication. I call that talking. I don't call that communication. And certainly very little listening. Brevity requires that you say what there is to say briefly and then listen. The next one is acknowledgement. The acknowledgement is to ac accept and let the person know that you heard what they said and how what they said has impacted you. As an example, I would say, thank you, Malka. I appreciate what you said about my background. And what that means to me is I am returned to being inspired and how come I'm delighted to be here on this call and thank you for having me with this group. So that's the acknowledgement to Malka. The third one is empowered mindful listening. It means that you're listening to the person where he, she is, not where you have the thought they ought to be or should be, and or what's called automatic listening. You're listening to them as in, they always say this, or they never say this, or this is, this is typical, or here we go again. That's not empowered mindful listening. An example of empowered mindful listening is listening to that person as though he or she is a leader. You're listening to a leader speaking to you, or you're listening to someone who is capable speaking to you. You're listening to someone who is leadership capability and respect, respectful, and you listen to them from those places. That's called empowered 
mindful listening because now you have a way that you're listening to that person. Will you listen to everybody that way? You'll listen to people depending on how they communicate with you. By listening to people through an empowered, mindful listening, they will experience the next tool called being heard. Most people experience being heard by people who are silent. Also, when people are silent, the speaker often will say, what are you doing? Are you listening? And it's a very uh, unusual experience for people to say, yes, I'm listening. Like, really? From the perspective that many people don't listen. They act like they're listening. They're hearing you. There's a difference between hearing a person and listening to a person. Listening requires that you be fully, you be fully present with that person as they are speaking. The next tool is bold. Bold is not rudeness. Bold is saying what there is to say in the moment authentically. As in a bold statement may be to tell someone, I'm no longer listening. I checked out. That's a bold statement to make to someone right then and there in the moment. And the fact is, is that it's the truth in the event that you have already checked out. You have stopped listening. Well, to say it is bold. And it is also very respectful from the perspective that most people know when people check out, they don't say anything about it. I have two, I have a son and a daughter, and they have been raised to say to me, mom, when they get that I am no longer with them. And they have, do not hesitate. They follow the rules very, very well. They'll say, mom, where'd you go? What, what happened? How come? Did you hear what I said? Did you just leave? I mean, they're very quick to call me back if I've gone off and thought somewhere else. So they have learned to be bold. It's not disrespectful. It's letting, it's, it's supporting me to come back to the present moment with them. How come I checked out? I thought about something they were saying and went back to their childhood in terms of how did I do that as a mother? How did I miss, how did I miss that? The point is, is that they knew I stopped listening to what they were saying because I was back in the past about what kind of mother I was instead of staying with them in their communication and listening. The beauty is, is that we have, my son and my daughter and I have a wonderful relationship in terms of honesty and authenticity. So that's uh, number five in terms of the tools. The sixth one is intuition. Intuition, fortunately, is present in the present moment. It is not, intuition is not available in the past and intuition is not available in the future. Intuition is only available in the present moment. And all of us have intuition. All of us don't follow it and all of us have it. And here's the good news. When I discovered that intuition was always right, I was a happy camper because intuition is never wrong. What, what, what goes off track is when I don't follow my intuition. And intuition is listening. And when you listen and follow and honor your intuition, I guarantee you, you will be an effective listener and an effective communicator. The next tool is called MSU, making stuff up. This is something that everyone with whom I have ever worked spends about 80 to 90% of their time in communication making stuff up. Instead of listening to what the speaker is saying, they're already making up what the speaker means without checking out what the speaker is saying. What do you mean by that? Many of my clients and, and participants in my workshops have said, well, I don't want to sound like I'm stupid, like I'm supposed to know what they mean. Well, people don't necessarily know what you mean. And I have a very simple exercise that I give for people to get, no, people don't always know what you mean. I say the word bird, B-I-R-D, bird. And then I ask for a show of hands in terms of what people think I mean. Sometimes people will raise their hand and they say, were you talking about that little feathery uh, creature that flies. Okay. Other people will say, oh, you're talking about, that's what women in England are called, birds. 
okay, what else, what else could it mean? Well, there's a jazz player. Uh, there's a jazz musician whose name is Bird. Which one, are you, which one of those were you talking about? You see, people don't necessarily know what you mean by a particular word. Therefore, they present them, they prevent themselves from asking, what do you mean by that? And the answer generally is, well, I don't want to appear stupid, like I don't know. Well, in most cases, you don't know, because they're the ones that are speaking, and they're the ones that know what they mean. So feel free to ask what they mean versus you're taking the time to make stuff up. Generally, when we make stuff up, we're not quite on target with what the speaker's intent is or was. That's the tool number seven. Tool number eight is completion. Completion means the way that we're using it, we're finished with that conversation for now. And what most people experience in terms of being listened to, other people, and when they check out, they've already heard what they've already heard what they as much as they intend to hear and they leave the conversation which leaves the speaker incomplete and very often people will f not finish their own sentences they'll will start a sentence then they will go to the statement called well you know well you know and i went yes you know i went to you know i went for lunch and then you know they don't finish and therefore there is no completion in the conversation. Completion is finishing the thought, finishing the sentence, and finishing the completion of the communication and saying, I'm complete. I'm, I'm done with this part of the conversation or I'm, I'm complete speaking. When This is when you're truly used, used to having clear communications between two people. Socially, very seldom does that ever happen. People speak over each other, they talk, they finish each other's sentences, and there's not a whole lot of, quote, listening going on. It's more of a social uh, uh, talking that's taking place, and it's chit-chat. There's this thing called the chat room. It's chatting, and that passes for communication when, in fact, it isn't. It's simply social um, verbiage that's going back and forth. Therefore, Completion is one of the nine tools to be an effective, um, empowered, mindful listener. And the last one is called coach action. It is taking an action that one would not normally take. And therefore, that particular type of action supports you as the listener and the speaker to listen differently to, instead of hearing the person, to ask questions and to, t and to say something in a different way than you would say it so that you can be heard and that your communication is clear. Those are the mindful, empowered, mindful listening tools. Now tonight, I'm requesting that you participate in a very short exercise that I have given to many of my workshops uh, on listening and the way that the exercise goes is that there will be an A and a B. And each one of you is requested to pick an A and a B, turn to get a partner, and pick you, one of you becomes an A, the other becomes a B. And what you're going to do is you're going to talk about your day. And you have one minute to talk about everything that has happened in your day in order to bring you to this meeting tonight. So what did you do today? And uh, before we go there, please pick a partner, someone next to you, and either you pick become an A or you become a B. It doesn't matter because you're also you're going to get a chance to do the same thing. So take a moment now and pick an A and a B. Will you do that, please? Have you all picked a partner? Does everybody have a partner? Okay, does everybody have a partner? Yes? Okay. Now, the, be, both of you are going to speak for one minute at the same time what you did all day today in order to get here to this meeting tonight. So begin. You have one minute. Start talking.
You're both supposed to be talking at the same time. You're talking to each other at the same time. Okay, stop. <laughs> Did either of you hear what either of you said? Not really, okay. Now, person A, you're going to say what it took for you to get here to this meeting tonight, all day. What, what did you do today to get here for this meeting tonight? And B, you're going to listen. Now, you're going to listen without nodding your head. You're going to sit absolutely still and listen. No nodding, no shaking your head, no you're to listen with no responses at all. And I see one particular person in black, it's a woman. You, do you have a partner at all? Well, <laughs> Is it possible for you to get this? Does somebody else not have a partner? Okay, let's begin. Part two. Somebody's coming up to be a partner. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Who's per uh, the lady that didn't have a partner? What's your letter? Are you A or B? A? Okay. So your partner now is B. All right. A, you're going to speak now for, I'm going to shorten it now. You're going to speak for 30 seconds and B is going to sit and listen with no gestures, no facial expressions, simply listen. And A, you're to start talking. And that's true for all the A's in the room. Remember, no, no gestures, no head nodding, absolute stillness. Begin, 30 seconds. Stop. Okay, A's, did you experience being listened to? Yes? Raise your hand if you did, because I'm not hearing you very well. There's not, the volume over here isn't very well. Did you experience it being heard, being listened to? Raise your hand if you did. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now, B's. You are going, A's, now you have the same directions. No gestures, no head nodding, absolute stillness. B's, what did it take for you all through, throughout the day to get here tonight to this meeting? Begin. <laughs> Stop. All right, B, did you experience being listened to? 
Raise your hand. Yes. The difference between the, how people talk over each other and the difference between being absolutely still and in silence is what is the ground, it's the groundwork for becoming and practicing mindful, em empowered, mindful listening. My next book, which is coming out, I Know You Hear Me, Are You Listening, which is due for publication uh, basically no later than October of this year, has everything to do with the empowerment of mindful listening, meaning you're still, you are present when you're truly listening. And something dynamically happens unknowingly when you are listened to your personal vibration increases your energy increases so you begin to expand and become a lighter being in terms of being listened and when you experience that you then that vibration then expands and extends to others and you'll be able to impact other people in terms of their well-being simply by showing up from the perspective that you are now listening. And you will listen and hear the noises that you had not heard before from the perspective that you're now listening from a totally different place, meaning you're not listening from your mental place, you're truly listening from all four quadrants, mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual. This is what the listening work is that I do and that I do with everyone with whom I interact, my clients and people in my workshop. Now, this, this has been a joy for me to be here with you to share the kind of work that I do. And that's an example. If I'm, I am available for any questions and answers, any questions that you have, and I will am delighted to be able to give you the answers to your questions. And I'm asking you, Malka, is if there is a question in the room that you repeated, given that you have the microphone and they can ask any questions that are of interest to them in terms of this kind of work. So is Malka, are you here? Yeah. yeah. Who has the next question? I saw a hand raise. I'm sorry. I'm on to the fourth one. You could explain it again, please. The fourth one. Repeat the question again. You had you have nine aspects, right? The fourth aspect. If you could go over it again, please. <laughs> She wants to know if you can repeat the fourth tool that you spoke yes. about. Yes. <laughs> yes, thank you. The fourth tool is being heard. And the being heard means that as the, as the person, the people were being, have, talking one at a time and the listener was quiet and still, they experienced the fullness of being heard. You're welcome. Any other questions? Hi, I have a question. Hi. Um, what do you think is the more, most important lesson to be learned in life? Uh, uh, Malka, please. What do you think is the most important lesson to be um, learned in your life, in a life? I think the most important lesson for you to learn in a life, you being plural, is the contribution that you are. You came here as a contribution for you to learn that and to communicate from that place of being a contribution and know that you were sent here to contribute to all of us, to enrich all of us as, as humanity. That's the most important lesson you can learn in a life. Hello. How important is the sight? Look at each other's eyes in the power of listening. How important is the sight? 
to look at each other's eyes in the power of listening? The answer is it, it is important and it depends on the listener. There are certain people who are listening where to look in someone's eyes is not necessarily an acknowledgement. Therefore, in certain cultures, to look someone in the eyes is disrespectful. So it depends on who the person is. In our, I, I'm saying in this culture, like in, in the United States of America, to listen, to look in someone's eyes, there are people who have been taught, don't look at me. When you look at them, it can scare them. And then there are other people who, if you don't look at them, they experience being disrespected. So my answer is, it, it depends on who the person is. There is no cookie cutter for looking into people's eyes. I would love to have it be that way. And unfortunately, with all the people I've worked with, there are times when I have looked people in the eye and they have gotten angry with me. So I was taught by y'all when to look you in the eye and when not to. Hello, <laughs> that. My name is Anna Mundia. I would like to ask you something that is difficult my attention. You say that you work with people who are in jail. Right. She um, wants to know you. To listening to those people in such a turmoil. How do you what? Okay. She says that she says that you are you are in jail with all those people. How did you take care of yourself being in that turmoil? Perfect. No, I was not in jail with them, thank goodness, and I was in training. <laughs> I was in training and how I took care of myself, that's when I learned the, the value of massage. I learned the value of meditation and I learned the importance of nutrition and having to take uh, long naps in terms of how my energy had been really uh, zapped, had been taken by the lowness of the vibration of people who were incarcerated. That's when I learned I must take care of myself in order to deliver my gift. So it was about me being staying healthy so that I could serve others. And my being healthy meant self-acceptance. It meant self-love. This isn't about selfish. This is so that I am sturdy enough, that I am, uh, I rebound quickly enough in order to be able to serve you. So that's what I learned. And yes, it was quite toxic and it was one of the most valuable lessons. I, it still is with me and I can sense when people are not well and when they're, they're up to harm to others from that first training. Thank you very much. Hi. So, uh, Dr. Brown, my question is um, if you can talk about the connection uh, between listening and, and I guess, um, empathy and, and truly understanding what people are feeling, but also um, to empathize, uh, I guess, with ourselves to uh, the connection between listening and empathy. He wants to know the connection between listening and empathy. Uh -huh. they, are, they are hand in hand. When you are listening in that moment, you are empathic, empathetic. That is what listening brings with it. It's like the front of the hand and the back of the hand. As a listener, one is empathetic. One is empathic. One is picking up the vibration of another when one is listening. All four quadrants are open when one is listening. When one is hearing, there's only one quadrant and that's mental. And then there is this, what happens as one of the tools is making stuff up. So the person is listening, is hearing 25% and making up the other 75%. When one is listening, one gets the full gestalt of the communication and therefore will respond 
um, accurately, appropriately, effectively in that moment to that particular communication. That's the difference between listening. It's not the difference. It's in, it's in tune with. How am I doing on time? I've got five more minutes. Thank you. Okay, I have uh, two quick questions. One of them is um, when I'm in the presence of people, like let's say we're having a meal and they're on their phone or the phone is on top of the table and it feels like that's a third person or another person. Um, and so I usually say, I don't think your presence like should be put away your phone. That sounds a little bit rude, but do you have another recommendation for us to be more present with each other when we're having a meal or just talking to one another to not have the telephone cell phone down? She wants to know how she can tell the other person who is sitting with her talking and she has her phone there as well, and who is talking on the phone and not being present with her. How does she? nicely tell the person to communicate without talking on the other phone. How does she say to the other person to communicate with her? Without talking on the phone at okay. the same time. At the same time, yes. There are a number of ways to say, I'm requesting that you be present with me for now. There are a number of ways to say that. I will answer in just a moment. Uh, one of the exercises that I have, I give to the people that I train as coaches, it's called what there is to say. And there are many things that there are to say. It's like a, developing a repertoire. When someone is on the phone with you, when someone is on the phone and they're also there with you and they start to talk on the phone, one, this is bold, this is the tool bold, one of the things to say is, excuse me, I, would, I am requesting your time. Is this the right time? Excuse me, forgive me for interrupting. I'm requesting your time. Is this the right time? And wait for the answer. That's one thing to say. Depending on the level of relationship you have with that person, if you two call yourselves friends, you say to a friend, You're, I came to be with you and keep you company, and I miss you because you're not keeping me company. It depends on the relationship. Or there's another thing to say is, I miss you when you're talking on the phone and I'm here with you. That's another possibility. That's how come I say there are more, there's more than one way to say something to someone and you're still being respectful. Now, if you're choosing to be really bold, you can tell your friend if that person is your friend, I feel disrespected when you talk to somebody on the phone and you're not with me. For me, that's, I, I feel very disrespected. And, and as friends, that's not acceptable. That's bold. And if your friend really had no intentions of disrespecting you and didn't even know that you were being disrespected, they will stop doing that pretty quickly. How am I doing on time? Am I almost finished? Yeah, we're done. Just a quick one we're last done. question. Just have one Real fast. Clearly, you are saying that people can learn to be better listeners, but are some people better listeners by nature? Are peop some people better listeners by nature? Yes, children are better listeners than most of us until, as adults, we corrupt them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them make it short and clear. So I have my to question is why now they people get why do people nowadays get easily offended? when they ask you a question and you give them a response? The answer is it depends on where you gave them the response from. I call that if people get offended, it most likely was not a response. It could have been a reaction. A reaction brings a similar uh, disarming energy with 
people who ask the, if they got the offended, if they got offended, it may be how you reacted to the question and you came back with a different kind of energy that didn't match what they were expecting. Now, today, in today's society, and I mean as of today, there, there is an dis-ease, and I'm using that deliberately. We, there, in our culture, right now, in our society, there is a dis-ease in terms of people are not listening to each other. So therefore, the vibration has lowered. And it is a challenge to even say hello to someone without that person being offended. And all you said was hello. What do you mean by that? How come you got that tone? If the people are walking into a listening, a societal listening that is negative. So they may be already respect, uh, re reacting to that. And I say, those are dramas waiting to happen. So you're speaking into a drama that wasn't yours and you walked into it because people were not listening. Am I complete now, Malka? Yes, thank you, Dr. Hill. Just one more thing. I would like you to explain a little bit about the Women's Intensive. The Advanced Women's Intensive yes. is October 3rd, 4th, and 5th in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Yes. Sorry, gentlemen, you're not able to come. You can come as a partner to one of the women who's coming. However, it's in Cabo San Lucas for three days. 8 a.m. to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And what women are going to experience is how to listen so that their children, their brothers, their fathers, their sisters, their mothers are impacted and empowered by how they listen and have a new relationship with themselves first. Women will leave, this is I can say with absolute certainty, women will leave with a different listening for themselves. So that's what the advanced women's intensive is. And they, the listening that they have will be augmented and it will also be expanded upon. And there will be new insights into how she is as a woman in our culture and in our society. Again, that's, uh, that's October 3rd, 4th and 5th, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, 2019 in Cabo San Lucas. Thank you. I thank you all for Welcome allowing to me to be with you this evening. It was a joy and a pleasure. Dr. And, Carol. Uh, be well and listen to yourselves. Th Dr. Thank Carol, you. please tell everyone your book. Your book. How, how do they get their how your, book? You get your book? Um, if uh, you can give them my email number, email address, yes. Yes. and I will be happy to send them how to get the book. And yes. if they get the book from me, uh, I will, they will get an autographed signed copy. If they get it from Amazon or they get it as an ebook, they will not be able to get my autographed signed copy. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Carol. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. 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 Namaste.